You don't know what's coming. So I'm not John Stewart. <laughs> Surprising. But I love John Stewart. And um, when I was trying to think, you know, how we do conference presentations, dear Lord Jesus, who accepts these things? You propose them in the middle of the night and you think, no one's ever going to accept this. And then they send you a letter and you go, crap, I have to do this now. <laughs> so that's kind of what we're doing today. So um, uh, are we having fun yet? Are we here? All right, stand up, everybody. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Don't be me. I am the non-participant. I want you to know I sit in the back of the room. I, I snarl at everybody. It's terrible. Stretch a little bit. Clap. Everybody clap. A standing ovation. I'm so excited. All right, sit down. We're done. So this is great. I've already gotten a standing ovation. So last year you were in Mississippi for UDL Summit. It rained like Seattle every freaking day. Um, yesterday, this is what it looked like. 84, sunny, gorgeous. Enjoy your spring break. So the UDL Summit, what do we do here? Well, usually, and tomorrow, let me get my serious voice on. Tomorrow, you will end the day with a very lovely fireside chat, most likely, by Dr. David Rose. Dr. Rose, please sign, stand up. Please, come on, come on. Thank you. Dr. Rose is the quintessential Harvard professor, in my opinion. He speaks in very lovely tones. You will, you will leave enabled, empowered, reflective. It'll be great. Make sure you all stay. This is my version of a fireside chat. More like a raging wilderness fire out of control. Particularly enhanced by the fact that my flag didn't get in until three this morning. And so, oh, thank you. Oh, kind. Ovation and Oz. Oh, it's great. So this is what's going to happen today. My mother, whose picture to avoid copyright issues I have put in this presentation, um, would be very embarrassed because today I'm going to say the things you're not supposed to say. And that's what my chat's about today. The things you're not supposed to say about UDL. So whatever that title was that I sent in at 3 in the morning, who knows. But what I'm trying to figure out is, is the cat going up or down? What are we doing with UDL? So going backwards, um, our lovely coordinators, Brian Dean and, um, and Sue Harden, advised me before I burned down the house to perhaps share where I am in my own UDL journey. So last year I was like you, probably a little tireder because the summit was in Mississippi, but um, I was like you and I was sitting in the audience and I, honest to God, felt like a loop was playing in my head. If you've been a part of this UDL business for a while, you know that at the summit we tend to have similar conversations every year. Research, we need this, we need that, we need more, blah, blah, blah. At leadership meetings, we have the same conversation every year. This conversation has been playing in my head now since about 2003, um, maybe 2002 when I was at Illinois, but for sure right after that. Um, I'm tired of this conversation. This was my head last year as I sat out. If you were around me last year, I'm sorry. I was very crabby and very non-social. I will not be that way this year. But this is how I left the summit. And sometimes this is a good place to be because it motivates change. And so when I left the summit, I was reflective. Sometimes I can be, David, really, sometimes. Um, so I was reflective about, well, what am I so ticked off about? What's, what's so aggravating to me? And you know what it was? It was that I would sit there and I would think, well, where are the frickin' fe feasibility studies? What are they doing for kids with significant disabilities? How does this apply to the people I work with? How am I supposed to train teachers with the information I'm being given on UDL? It's all nice and lovey and care bearish and we should all sit together and sing kumbaya about what, this, what a great thing this is. But where's that information? And then I sat there frustrated and I realized um, there is no them. There is no they. There's, not, there's us. And so, Elisa and everyone else in this room, it's time to be proactive. It's time to make change. It's time to figure out which way are we going. So I left the UDL summit last year and I decided, done. I'm not looking for they, I'm not looking for them. I'm gonna change my practice. And I did. 
I have four studies going on right now examining UDL. I'm going to talk briefly about them today. Not very much, but briefly. But they're very diverse. One is particularly a subject I'm interested in, which is how does UDL affect those students with more significant disabilities? Storytelling, qualitative study. One is with all of the state superintendents of education around the United States and the eight territories. Pretty interesting, scary, sad results going on there. Um, one is with our student teachers at USM, over 200 participants um, this semester, over 100 participants in the fall. How do we change teacher training to reflect a deeper definition of UDL? And one is in a school district that's implementing UDL with several other people. So I'm trying to figure this out. My charge today to you is what can you do to help figure this out? Um, we have lots of testimonials. There's lots of lovely feelings about UDL, but what's happening? So Dave, <laughs> Dave Eddie Byrne, stand up. Ta-da! Later you should get his, get his autograph. Make sure, give him stickers. So Dave, um, way back in 2010, wrote this fantastic paper called Would You Recognize, right? Would you recognize UDL if you saw it? Here's my option right now. <laughs> Here's where I am. So I'm all over the world. My goal today, by the way, is not to say the word that goes in this blank. Um, here's where I am in my journey. So it's, you know, let's see, when was the first summit? 2013, was it? And I, I was asking questions and George was presenting and I asked some really bizarre question as I'm known to do and he said, I don't think you understand UDL very well. And today, I don't think I understand UDL very well. That's where I am. I keep going around and around about what is this UDL thing and how do we actually see it in practice? How do we know that it's there? So sometimes I'm at the WTF question, at, the, at that answer for this particular question. Dave get, oh, animation, I forgot. I'm sorry, really sorry, so sorry. Here we go. <laughs> oh, and then she went too far. Uh, Dave gave us 10 propositions for UDL in 2010. 2010, people. 2010, say it with me. 2010. What year is it now? Anybody? 16. We're in 2016. We got 10 propositions with a pretty darn good smart plan about what we needed to do to move UDL forward, right? In the next 10 years. We are six years into that 10 years. 60% of our time is gone. What have we done? Well, let's take a pulse point. Let's, let's check the pulse of UDL. Let's see where we are. Now, most of you know I'm a university professor, so I'm one of those people. Those people. Yes, I am one of those people. But my history is teaching, and I love being in classrooms, and that's a hope. Hopefully, if I live long enough, I'll go back to a classroom at some point, maybe after today. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, without... Eddie Burns' permission, so sorry Dave. <laughs> I have regrouped his proposals, or his propositions, to really think about where are we with UDL. And I've put them in categories that make sense to me with no permission from Dave. And this is what I want to talk today about. Like where are we in this process as a field? I don't necessarily mean the people in this room, although all of us obviously have a vested interest in UDL or you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be sacrificing your lovely spring break to be here. But where are we as a field? Because once you get out of this room, once you move past, as Louis said, like-minded people, it gets scary pretty quick when you start saying UDL to people. Just last week, my new department chair said, UDL is a special ed thing. And I went, oh, 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 palpitations. We're in the South. I can do this. So, you know, it hurt me for a minute. And then we had to have a little conversation and what my mother would call a come to Jesus moment so that she understood that it was not that. But that's where it is outside of this room. We have to really make sure that we are doing what we can to move the practice forward. And we already have an outline for how to do that. It's not like we have to create it. It's already there. So, in thinking about these, let's start with the first one. UDL is more complex than we originally thought. It is more complex than we originally thought. CAST, I love CAST. I'm a professional cadre member and I, well, I was maybe <laughs> after today, we'll see. So I love CAST and they have a video that I use in all of my PD that I do. 
And it's, it's um, UDL at a glance. It's a great video. I'm sure all of you have seen it. You know, this teacher needs to serve these people. This teacher <laughs> needs to serve these people. It's a great video. But at the end, it says this. It says, it's simple. And at first, I used to hear that, and I was like, oh, yes, it's simple. And now that I'm on this journey where I keep going, what the flip is UDL? I, I go, no, it's not simple. It's really not simple. The definition is pretty simple, right? Until we start, as our earlier presenters talked about, that all word and that effective word and that inclusive word. And then we look at those things like design and development. What the heck does all that mean? It's like trying to figure out LRE, right? When you're teaching LRE, least restrictive environment. It's hard to teach to people. They don't necessarily get it. UDL is not simple. It's not, and we as a field have to quit trying to oversimplify it because we have people thinking they're already doing it just because they're using a different type of pen or a different type of, pool of tool. And we have to stop that. It's like going to Baskin Robbins with 31 flavors, 31 checkpoints, 31 flavors. I think there was some intention there. I'm just saying. It seems similar to me. If you're like me, I never order the same thing. So it's a big deal to go in and figure out what goes in my Sunday at the end of the night. It's a big deal to figure out all the checkpoints, some of the checkpoints, how many of the checkpoints, when do I apply the checkpoints, what do the checkpoints mean? That's exactly what Louie was just saying. Teachers are responding in other countries. Teachers are responding in this country to that very same concern. What do you mean what, it's flexible? I don't do flexible. I don't. So it, it is complicated. It's not so complicated that we can't do it, though. So my message is not negative. It's not to say we can't do this. It's just to say we have to quit oversimplifying it. We have to understand that the three principles are the tip of the iceberg. They're what you see. All of this other stuff, this is where it's really happening. This is where it's taking place. It's what's underneath that surface. It's really what's underneath, and we have to pay attention to that. My friend Jamie will not speak to me after this. Um, so if we think about what's been impressed recently about UDL, or what's been published recently about UDL, people are still saying it's kind of elusive. It's not quite there yet. If you were lucky enough, and I've been on them every month to publish this, Akolo and Dietrich did a presentation at CEC last year that was fantastic, and I, I challenge you to email them repeatedly throughout the day and ask for their slide deck. Um, Rao and Brant, Bryant and, uh, sorry, missed the word, okay, um, did a really great literature review where they talked about UDL is still at a nascent stage. In 2016, we're still young. And I understand that, yes, there's development that happens over time, but we're in the law, people. We're policy. We have to figure this out. We have to make sure that we know. And then my dear friend James um, and Jim Gardner, yes, it's 2010, but they said it in print, so I can use it now, um, said UDL lacks a true operational definition. Sure, they said that six years ago, but the truth is it still lacks a true operational definition. It does. If it's out there somewhere, somebody share it with me because I can't find it. If you look at other things in print, Vitelli did a, a survey, um, 776 participants. What did he find? He found that people were only hitting those three principles in their teacher education programs, that they weren't going deep enough. They weren't going to the breadth and the depth of UDL. They weren't going deep enough. That's a problem for us as professional developers. Ron, OK, and Bryant, they also said, people talk about the three principles and nothing else. They tie things through the three principles and nothing else. Early results from a study that we're doing with state superintendents, 26 respond, we have 29 responders yet, we're not quite closed, but I wanted to present what we have. Um, 26 state superintendents. First of all, no policy on UDL. Okay, we can deal with no policy on UDL. But then we offered them some choices about how people in their state learn about UDL. What do they do to learn about UDL or to practice UDL or to make uh, choices about how they use UDL in their classroom. 62% teacher's choice. Whatever the teacher wants to do, that's fine. Do you know how variable that could look over time? Yes, you do, because you're all out in the field, right? That's a scary thing when you start saying, it doesn't matter. 
Just use your Promethean board, boom, UDL, there you go. It's a problem. And then we get qualitative responses like this, and I'm gonna read it to you, I'm sorry, but I am. Years ago, years ago, there was a large emphasis on UDL. Units and lessons were written by state educators and posted on the state website. Since then, there's been very little emphasis. Essa, anybody, you wanna say? Very little emphasis placed on UDL from the state level. What is happening in our state is happening on the local level. Years ago, the fact that this starts with years ago scares me. Are we done? Are we over? Surely not. I've invested a lot of my career in this and I really hope, I have read where Waymeyer said, the promise of UDL for students with significant disabilities. Rindak, Gian Greco, all these guys talked about what UDL is gonna do for our kids with severe disabilities. And yet I don't see that promise. Where is that promise? Where is it fulfilled? Who is it on to fulfill it? It's on us. It's on us. We have to get moving in terms of doing those things that we're doing every day, which many of you are teachers who are doing this every day, but we've gotta move it forward into places that can be replicated, where other schools can see it and build from it, where other practitioners can use it, where teacher education is not just stopping at those three principles. UDL is much more complex than we originally thought. It is much more complex than we originally thought. Implementation is not simple. It takes work. Time check, oh Lord. UDL is fundamentally about proactive design. And this is the thing I'm learning the most from in my work right now. We have to, the, 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 sorry, the biggest piece of UDL that I see in the work that I'm doing is not the 31 checkpoints in terms of the tools. It's that identifying variability and removing barriers. That seems to be where the change happens. So real quickly, this is from one of our study respondents. So I started with really looking at student profiles and sort of diversity profiles. And even before my students would be in the room, I would kind of jot down all the kinds of things that I might encounter in an inclusive classroom and see how I'd go about taking away any obstacles or even design my classroom and even the space so that there weren't those barriers for those diverse students who would be in my room in the fall. So that was step one really imagining what an inclusive student profile list would look like. Step two was physical space and making the physical space as accessible as possible. And step three was designing the lesson plans to meet student needs. This, this is the beauty. This is the design. This is where it's at. This is identifying variability and removing barriers. We have to stop being in a PD and saying, to a teacher that raises their hand while I present two different formats. Oh, you're already using it. No, it's not just good teaching. It doesn't occur naturally. That's, it's intentional, it's planning, it's identifying variability and removing barriers. Of course people are doing some of these things already. They all have a research base, most of which happened prior to the development of UDL when you start looking at that. You, that research base. It's possible to use UDL or to use a Promethean board and not know anything about UDL. That's possible. We can do that. So it's not whether or not you're actually doing those checkpoints. You don't get lucky and just do UDL. It doesn't just happen. Sorry, that was my St. Patrick's Day. And then finally, because I'm a little over time, red light's flashing. <sighs> Finally, we have to think about how to measure. And this is where most conversations bog down because UDL is one of those really complicated things that we need to have flexible and we need to have variability in and we need to have some, uh, some ability to morph into different settings with different things, but yet we do need to measure it in order for it to continue to be a practice that is useful and contributing to education. Look around this room. There are a lot of smart people in this room, smarter than me for sure, and we all demand evidence-based practices in our classroom. We all want to know what's the research base for what we're doing? What is the evidence base for what we're doing? We need to be concerned about that for UDL in terms of implementation in K-12 schools. Is 12 to 29 studies, depending on how you measure those studies, enough to consider that an educational base? My mother. As of yet, no published study effectively evaluates the application of the UDL framework 
in a whole K-12 system. Is that okay with us? It's not okay with me, but I need you to think about that for yourself. We can conquer this chaos. We have to figure it out. If you're a teacher, you have to be willing to let people come into your classroom and look at what you're doing. If you're a district, be willing to let people come in and have conversations and look at what you're doing. And if you're a researcher, quit waiting for them. Don't be me. Quit waiting for them. You are them. And we need to get busy doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're not there yet, but we can be there. So we have an idea smash, right, Steve? And, I, and I'm blending into the idea smash. Believe it or not, that was planned. And I even coordinated, Raul would be happy with the checkpoints. Um, so you should have on your table, Sue, I'm hoping they do. Oh, yay, thank you. You should have on your table a handout. And if you are in severe disabilities, you may be familiar with something called person-centered planning, where you really map out someone's life for the next three years using that person. We're gonna do a little abbreviated version of that. We're gonna do our own goal setting um, using some executive function skills. And I want you to think about, what are you gonna do today? What are you gonna do today to influence your conversation or practice that's gonna add to the knowledge base? What do you do next week? What do you do in a month? in six months and before the next summit. You can write on this paper, then take a photo. You may draw on this paper, and then take a photo. You may speak it into your smartphone or tablet. I've, I've started recording myself on my iPhone when I sleep in terms of I wake up with an idea and I record it. You should hear some of those crazy things in the next morning. <laughs> it's insane. Um, or you could wrap it wrap it into your smartphone or tablet. But set some goals. Do, I'm not gonna say do what I did, but make this a time to figure out your work path for the next year. If you run a district, if you are a teacher, what can you do in your environment? We need you guys. My new best friend Kathleen sitting back there. Kathleen, raise your hand. She had no idea. Middle school teacher, props. I can't do it. I did it for a year and ran screaming from the room. Cause you know, middle school, oh my God. But what can Kathleen do? Kathleen can do a lot of things. She can invite people in. She can join a conversation. She can say, this worked, this didn't work. We're great at selling stuff. We're not so great at really talking about the hard things. And we need to use this time for the next two days to talk about the hard things. After you set your goals, make somebody accountable. Turn to the person next to you. Have them, first of all, get their name ask what their plan is to contribute, and then blast that mug out all over social media. What is so-and-so gonna do? Here's what they say they're gonna do. So let's do that. Let's make a difference. Let's change education because I believe in UDL. I really do, but believing is not enough. So if you were there last year, you know, let's quit clowning around and let's get this thing done because that's what we need to do to make a better educational system for all kids.